teen years when my children were little babies and growing up in school, we met in the parents' teachers uh, uh, kind of a, a gathering, and we've been friends since then. And, um, and then she introduced me to her brother-in-law. So I let the brother-in-law tell the story, but he also brought a friend along whose name is also Sabrina, right? We got it right? Yes. Okay, good. So Sabrina and uh, we've been talking before the show, so um, Sabrina, vibrant young woman, um, and, and I asked the question, what is the connection, you can come closer to the mic, what is the connection um, between yourself and George? Like, how, how did this connection actually came about? Um, George and I met through a conduit, a friend who was very concerned and very passionate about also what he was doing in encouraging the public to become aware of organ and tissue transplant. Not because it was something in the newness of our, our community and society, but because people really didn't understand too much about it. Mm -hmm. And George was the original sole per person who was out there activating the public's awareness. And he did it by not only sacrificing his own immediate funding with his home and uh, putting mortgages up and walking across Canada and educating the youths so their families and, and their extended families can become aware of the necessity of organ and tissue needs. And, and I think that without knowledge, we do certainly perish. And he was the man who is the catalyst behind this knowledge. I feel that he has contributed to change. He has made a contribution in helping people regain their life. He has also contributed in people finding purpose in their lives. And I think that the most important purpose is feeling that you can contribute to the life and well-meaning purpose of who you are. And I think defining who you are is really what you do with your life. Finding out what your assignment it is and how you can really readily be available to continue to encourage lives and build momentum. And what I mean by momentum, I mean is there's a need, there's a shortage in this country. And George has always stood up for the requirement that is essential for man, which is keeping the force of life growing in our community, making people see that hope is always there, and if we want it, we can actually become a part of it. That's what it's all about. It's your involvement. It's your grace. It's your love. It's your time. It's your time to see, feel, relate, and to have compassion, mercy. It's not being judgmental. It's actually being a group of, of, of new thinkers because the wave of the 21st century is the new way of giving. And the new way of giving is defined by what our needs are. Our needs has now superseded technology where we can actually give life from our own living parts of our own body. Think about that definition. You can give life from your own organs while you're alive. Mm -hmm. And that to me is another dimension of giving. It is the abstract form of giving love. And your love is something that is always going to shine through for the next generation. And I think that if you can give in this manner without accepting any sort of reward, except to know that you did the right thing, mm -hmm. I think you're in very much in awareness of what organ and tissue transplant is all about. George was born into a hard-working Italian immigrant family on July 27, 1955 in Toronto, Ontario, growing up. George had a great passion for being involved in his local community, especially in sports and recreation. However, as a child, illness such as chronic asthma, rheumatic fever, and contacting hepatitis C at the age of 15 prevented him from obtaining his full potential. As a young teenager, George, George battled with a current demon in society. Substance abuse, his addiction led to George uh, to jail and institutions. On September 11, 1986, by the grace of God, George left that life behind. This major transformation in his life formulated his vision to teach all people how to achieve a healthier and holistic lifestyle. In the next 10 years, George and his childhood friends created and developed programs that helped literally thousands of people overcome substance abuse addictions. George's persistence and integrity has also led him to roles in community as an outreach worker, coordinator, counselor, recreational manager, and visionary. George went on to become a fitness promoter and eventually found found our present charity step by step. Um, and George's story goes on and on. You want to see more about it? Go on to step by step 
Doxie, and you can read the whole thing. And we want to welcome George. Thank you for coming in and joining us this evening. Well, thank you. It's uh, I'm so happy being here. I'm so happy meeting you. I'm so happy I received that email. And you know, uh, I think it's all part of God's plan. And um, you know, uh, I thought after reading your email and um, uh, talking to you, um, I thought, you know, and I was just talking to Sabrina just before, and and I thought, you know, I got to bring Sabrina here to meet this 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 great man. Um, and you know, after talking to you some more before we started this uh, radio interview, um, I have to say you're everything I really expected. Uh, you're, you're a very humble person, um, and I and it's it's hard to see sometimes because I know you're just you're you're doing this through your actions uh, and through your love, but the way it comes out to me and I know a lot of people, what I see is a very courageous man, a very giving man, a very you know honest man, and and boy we can use a lot of that. <laughs> Well, I, I'm sitting here listening and I'm thinking, is it me he's talking about? <laughs> he really don't know me. <laughs> but no, um, I, I have to say that um, when I heard about you, I realized that I knew about you long before I knew about you. It's crazy. Yeah, because yeah. um, back in 95 when I just um, started at working at the, the, the hospital where I work at, um, I heard about your mom and then I heard about you and... Um, system I was telling me all about you and to believe that almost 10 years later a little more than 10 years later that we'd be actually sitting face to face talking about a, a situation that you've been facing for so long now you're also a recipient of a liver transplant it, yes I am um, actually uh, in 1992 um, I found out I had uh, terminal liver disease and I was told I had a couple of years left to live and I didn't know nothing about the organ transplant world or anything about it. You know, it was then that I found out everything about it, and and um, it kind of derailed my ambitions uh, in, in fulfilling my fitness career uh, at that time. But I think at that time God led me to a, a new awake or a new mission, I guess, in in life. And because um, I all I kept doing was researching, because I, I I first heard that Canada had one of the lowest rates of organ donations in the world mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know and that this was a world shortage problem as well so uh, although I couldn't continue my uh, uh, fitness career um, I was researching this issue almost every day I was I was so thirsty for this knowledge of why it was like this and why nobody was ever talking about organ donations at that time and uh, so, during the days or in months that I had left in my life, um, at that time, I, I, I thought I thought I would try and find out as much as I could about this. And in 1995, I was told I had a couple of days left to live. And uh, by the grace and courage of a family uh, that, you know, uh, unselfishly during the time that they lost their loved one. Uh, you know, they may, they were asked if they would donate their loved one's organ after the, the, that person tragically passed away, and they said yes. My life and five other lives were saved. And I remember waking up uh, after the operation, and the first thing that came to my mind was I was praying for that family because they were grieving during this time because they just lost it, and and yet my life was saved. You know, and. The only explanation I had in my mind why I was alive was that I had some work to do. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and I think it was from that moment on that I haven't stopped. You know, in the past 13 years, um, I've I, it, it's been relentless. It's been seven days a week. Uh, you know, um, it, it, no matter what. I mean, every day, no matter how bad it gets, whatever I have to do to get this message out, no matter how bad it gets. Uh, as long as I'm getting out of bed and I can do something, I'm going to do something, you know. And, and I, I guess that's why we called it Step by Step, besides uh, hearing that song from Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. 